there was a feeling from the organisation they wanted to support the staff and the mindfulness programme was, was put forward as a, as, a, as a possible option. Mindfulness is very much in the public domain these days and so we secured some charitable funds to invite a mindfulness uh, company to the trust and they were able to train 100 of our staff and our main intention was to bring the technique to the clinical areas around theatres. That's where the uh, service demands and the stresses on the teams are, and the individual are greatest. And where we felt that mindfulness or to be mindful would bring the greatest benefit to the trust or to the teams as well as to the patients ultimately. So the first thing we had to do was get sort of like a interest from the staff so that we knew who it was was potentially going to be the ones that we were putting on sending on the course and then we had to try and put them into a group that would work together we sort of tried to pick a cross-section um, of specialties really so that we could then delay the start of the list what i do can be deemed as quite a stressful job um, the course teaches you to almost go in yourself and, and take away all the, the, the nastiness and all the stress that's happening. And it does actually work. It, it, you can feel yourself de-stressing. Whether you do it at work and you do the one minute, or whether you wait till you get home and you do it for longer, it's entirely up to you. From my previous experience teaching veterinary surgeons, I was quietly confident that we could develop the idea and make this more of an organisational program of development than a, a strategic approach to deal with stress-related problems. I got involved with establishing the uh, Oxford Mindfulness Centre in the Department of Psychiatry in Oxford because I felt this was a really important project to support and then out of that started to adapt the therapeutic method of teaching uh, based on a book that Professor Mark Williams wrote with Danny Penman which kind of structured the theory into a self-help book which became very successful as a framework to, to, to deliver a reduced dose mindfulness-based cognitive therapy in a workplace environment to manage stress and develop a performance enhancement um, uh, aspect to, to teaching mindfulness. The leader of the course was so insightful and clearly had a wealth of his own personal experience that he was willing to share. It was really rich with theory and very technical kind of the physiological you know processes that go on within our bodies. I thought it would be very experiential and that it would be meditative kind of practices but it was it was really great to just learn so much at the same time. It was really interesting discussing concepts and perceptions with other members of staff that you don't normally work with. So, for example, you'd have like a picture or something and you'd have to go, what are your first impressions of that picture? And then you'd speak to someone else and you find out their perceptions were completely different to yours. So it's really interesting seeing how different people see things in different ways. I think the course um, has benefited my practice as I tend to stop and think more before I do something now as before I, I would just go and do something and not sort of think of the consequences or how my actions might be received by other people. I could understand how it could benefit me personally but wasn't quite so certain how it, how it would benefit the trust but by the time I'd completed the course I realised that not only had it been of great benefit to myself, but I could un understand how what I'd learnt during the course I could use in my work and perhaps change some of the ways I, I am at work some of the time. About three or four years ago, um, I decided to turn what was a kind of personal interest in um, mindfulness and meditation, something that I was personally finding quite helpful in my, in my own life into the object of my study. My, my PhD is based in the computer science department at Queen Mary University and um, the kind of field of work that I'm involved in is what you call interaction design. So very much working with technologies and um, developing new technologies, looking at how people interact with technologies. But well, okay, we've got these apps which have um, a bunch of MP3 recordings, offering a guided meditation, kind of, if you like, taking the teacher and putting them in the app. So I decided to see if there was something different that I could do. So I started looking at interactive um, designs and um, 
realized there was very little in the way of um, any kind of apps that used um, gesture with the phone. So I started playing around with that and came up with an, um, a concept whereby you were essentially doing quite a core meditation practice in, um, in mindfulness or, or many other meditation styles, which is to focus on the breath, um, but to do so in an interactive way using the screen of the smartphone. So the basic gesture was a sort of pressing and releasing on the screen of the phone, like a long press and then a kind of release. So the idea is that you long press as you breathe in and you release as you breathe out. And what you get with that is a kind of visualization which changes, which morphs back and forth. And it's really that simple. I learned a lot about how I'm not aware of what my body is doing a lot of the time. I'm, I sit now on the bus on the way to work and notice that my shoulders are about five inches higher than they should be. And I start to just pause and relax them and move a bit better and just sort of notice where the tension is. The breathing exercises are brilliant for that because um, the app really did help me with that, just kind of slowing down. My feeling was about doing the mindfulness was it was really to do with my relationship with myself. And um, outside work, I'm something of a technophobe because I feel that our lives are too dominated by technology and that in a sense it gets in the way of life and um, I did use the app to a certain extent at the beginning but I've chosen not to use it but equally I have it there and if I want to refresh some of what I did during the course I know it's two hand and I can go back and think about things or, or try different things. The ROH we work very hard anyway yeah but um with regards to uh, this course, I think everybody should do it. I don't think it should be limited to certain areas. I think it should be across the trust and almost to the point that not compulsory, but it should be advocated strongly. Mm -hmm.